Just within the past part of this afternoon, we got a whole bunch of receipts. This is the new document filing. If you follow the news, you may have heard it's coming into today. You may have seen some reports on it here in today's news coverage. Well, we have it. The filing of this big billion-dollar-plus case against Fox News. That's the defamation case against Fox by one of the voting machine companies. Now, why is this the top story in the nation tonight? Because... As partly expected, there are more new, original, bombshell revelations that I'm going to go through with you right now before I bring in our experts, including from all the way to the top, Rupert Murdoch, admitting things under oath that, well, let's just say he doesn't admit when he's not forced into a courtroom looking at a billion-dollar-plus fine. Murdoch admits that selected Fox hosts completely endorsed the lie about Donald Trump and the election. Murdoch asked under oath whether some of the hosts endorsed the big lie that the election was stolen, that he didn't actually lose. And Murdoch replies, yes, they endorsed. And that's not all. Under oath, we find a very different Murdoch. He's a business titan. He has all kinds of experience. He has communication skills. He has strategy. But he also understands something that goes to why we've covered this case from the beginning, why accountability still can matter in this country, that some questions cannot be dodged under oath without risking committing perjury. And that's why we're hearing this very different Mr. Murdoch than we hear from, say, Fox earnings calls or when he speaks in other forums. Under oath, we're hearing a Murdoch who needs to be clear about the facts. And the facts are they lied, they knew it, and it went to the top. Now, he doesn't throw everyone under the bus, but he does admit that some executives were out of line, and he talks about how some hosts, like Janine Pirro and Maria Bartiromo, endorsed and pushed what they knew to be a dangerous lie. I assume that you are getting to the bottom of exactly what Dominion is. You said that there may have been kickbacks to some uh, people who accepted the Dominion software. There's also the question of accountability. This is a case that is about lies. It's about the reaction to those lies. And it's also about how, according to the plaintiffs who are suing Fox, they say they have the evidence that shows Fox News, after it discovered lies and after it knew what it was doing, it continued to do it. And that goes to accountability. That's the opposite of, say, catching someone who is using the platform to commit defamation and removing them or removing executives who support that. So the company here suing Fox is pushing for a range of accountability, including, as mentioned, a billion plus dollars in penalties. So in this new deposition we got, a lawyer asked, what should the consequences be when Fox News executives knowingly allow lies to be broadcast? And Murdoch responds, they should be reprimanded. They should be reprimanded, maybe got rid of. Now, that's striking. Because what Mr. Murdoch is apparently trying to do is walk the line, even maybe give up certain members of his team or show a willingness to do so, give up some ground while still trying to protect the rest of the Fox empire. And let me tell you, it looks like Rupert Murdoch, who is very important in this, he's also someone would, someone with the position where he could decide to make this case go away if he wanted to offer settlement payments. He is trying to do more than one thing. None of this is happening in a bubble. I want you to recall that when we talk about consequences, the Fox empire already canceled an entire show of Lou Dobbs, a pretty famous but controversial media figure, and that was after they were warned about getting sued for a lot of money in these kind of cases. So that is part of what's happening here. Do you remove executives? Do you remove other people? Do you course correct in some way when the receipts inside this case also show a culture and an executive operation inside Fox that up to the top was pretty down with lies? which is the opposite of journalism and makes it harder for them to defend themselves in this case. Now, Murdoch was motivated to keep everything going as it was going in November and December. They expected Trump to leave the White House. They didn't know necessarily what would happen on January 6th, but they fed the lies that led people to act out that day. Today's filing also reveals when asked why Fox continues to give a platform to, for example, Mike Lindell, who continues to this day to lie about Dominion, Murdoch said, it's not red or blue, it's green. Even in a short-form answer, he has his gift of soundbite, you might say. Now, he's trying to argue that this basically is a type of defense, that they're doing business, not being malicious. That's one of the things legally he needs to try to argue. It sounds like something may be bad if 
green, money is the motivation to do shoddy, damaging, or even defamatory media. But what he's trying to say is they weren't malicious, they weren't doing this for politics, and that's his sort of partial defense. Well, it's not a very good one. And money as a motivator does not, of course, defend you against outright knowing defamation. So Murdoch also admits there wasn't enough voter fraud to change the outcome. Everybody knows that. The question is asked, is it fair to say you seriously doubted any claim of massive election fraud? And he says, yes. And you seriously doubted it from the very beginning. And Murdoch, under oath, says, yes. I mean, we thought everything was on the up and up. I think that was shown when we announced Arizona. Murdoch referring to something that so triggered Donald Trump and his fans that Fox was one of the very first outlets to call that key state, which at the time meant, well, Trump was losing. Murdoch also admits that he could have taken measures that he failed to take. For example, when they saw that people, certain guests, were just pushing lies, were not credible, were not newsworthy if they just came back and said the same lie over and over, he didn't do anything. So this is another interesting thing. Again, new out tonight. Could he have stopped Giuliani from being put on air? We all remember how that went. And Murdoch faces the question, could you have said to Suzanne Scott, that's their CEO or the host, stop putting Giuliani on the air? And he says, I could have, but I didn't. The machines can be hacked. There's no question about that. Their machines can be hacked. Because there's not a singular voter fraud in one state. This pattern repeats itself in a number of states. That is just a sampling. We are not going to give over too much of our airwaves to showing what is now evidence of defamation to the tune of $1.6 billion against Fox. Now, we told you from the beginning this was a big case. We did not know the evidence was going to be this big. We didn't know that some of the hosts and executives kept committing to writing so many things that are incriminating for them. That's why it's big news. Now, if you followed Mr. Murdoch's career, and I've done some reports on him here, as a factual matter, you don't get very far usually betting against him. Even when he's down or seemingly out, he finds ways to pivot. And sometimes that means throwing people under the bus. He seems willing and ready to do that here, at least with some of his so-called executive team. Sometimes it means getting rid of entire famous anchors, which they did with Dobbs, and which some companies who are suing Fox feel is a step and a sign that they knew they'd gone too far. But whether you count Mr. Murdoch out or not, what we're seeing, filing after filing, day after day, is a case where there is so much mounting evidence that if this does get to trial, that might be the worst thing for the Fox News empire and Rupert Murdoch that we've seen in years. And according to the plaintiffs, that would be a very good thing indeed for restoring some standard of truth and accountability in our polarized politics and media at a time when people are trying to literally overthrow the government, commit sedition, and kill innocent Americans in the name of lies that they often heard on Fox News. With that in mind, we want to bring in two experts on this, NYU Law Professor Melissa Murray and Daily Beast reporter Will Sommer, who's written extensively about this, including a book about conspiracy theories. Uh, welcome to both of you. Uh, Professor, I want to go to you first. Every time there's a filing, we do seem to see uh, some real evidence, whether it's on the deposition side, people fo forced into some level of admission, uh, or, of course, some of those damning texts we've seen. Uh, I laid out some of what's new tonight. I'm, I'm curious what stands out to you. Well, there's a lot here. I mean, this is the defamation case to end all defamation cases. Like, you typically don't get defamation cases with this much evidence, in part because for a large corporation like this, the standard is actually so high, actual malice under New York Times versus Sullivan. But you have so much evidence here that goes all the way to the top. Rupert Murdoch conceding that, yes, he could have done something, but he didn't. You have the general counsel, Viet Din, saying, like, yes, this is a really bad idea to allow these individuals who you know to be lying to have a platform, yet we did it nonetheless. So these are sort of blockbuster admissions that you don't ordinarily have in a case like this. And the other thing that's quite striking, although not necessarily relevant to the defamation claim, is just how interwoven this news organization, this separate business, this media platform is with the Republican Party. Over and over again, Rupert Murdoch discusses reaching out to his good friend, Jared Kushner, or reaching out to Mitch McConnell, not necessarily to talk about election fraud, but it just makes the point that 
Fox News is essentially a mouthpiece for this party. It is not necessarily an independent news source that's very much in bed with the Republican Party. Yeah, that's a point we wanted to get to, Professor. It's really striking. And, Will, I'm curious how you see the information warfare and propaganda in that, because it's a Republican Party uh, that really works with Fox as a lever. Uh, we've shown on our air, for example, Sean Hannity doing endorsement events. You know, there's a lot of criticism of the media. I've, uh, the media has to keep an open mind to criticism. Um, but very, you'll be very hard-pressed to find reporters uh, at The New York Times, uh, The Wall Street Journal, The AP, your outlet, uh, who go out and do campaign events endorsing any politician in any party. Uh, with Vox, it's just regular. The former Republican speaker's on their board. He comes from a different wing of the party, and the new evidence shows his concern, which in the case is bad for them because it shows they had people on the inside warning about this. Uh, here's the Paul Ryan email, and this is the top. You don't usually see this stuff. Uh, quote, Ryan believes some high percentage of Americans thought the election was stolen because they got a diet of information telling them the election was stolen from what they believed were credible sources. Murdoch responds, wake up call for Hannity, who's been privately disgusted by Trump for weeks, but was scared to lose viewers. Uh, what do you see here, Will? Sure. I mean, I think there's so much interesting stuff in these materials. You know, you talk about the Fox News as a wing of the Republican Party. One of the most striking things out of this case for me has been an email where Rupert Murdoch said, Let's just focus on electing Republican senators in Georgia. And really, you know, you can watch an hour of Fox News and get the sense that they're trying to help Republicans. But to have it put that plainly, I think, is remarkable.